Hey everybody, this is Calvin Waite. I trade crypto for a living. I'm not a registered or licensed financial advisor, planner, or broker, so nothing on this channel should be uh, taken as a recommendation to buy or sell. I also trade all of these things, so I probably have a vested interest in there. Um, but there's plenty of entertainment value and lots of education, so this will be awesome. For those of you who didn't know, my uh, subscription channel is live. So look at the link in the description over at CryptoInfluencers.com and you can see how I make all of my trades and what I do and what I think about everything. This channel is for uh, more hypothetical and looking at trends and the other one is for actual trading. So you might be interested in that. All right, <clears throat> I'm kind of messing around with some, some uh, technology stuff today. So uh, it's kind of a perfect day for that because we've got a uh, very flat, boring day. And let me tell you how healthy it is to have a boring day after all the volatility that, that we've experienced. So um, as, we, as we kind of transition through these insane periods where we have lots of volatility, um, a day like today really kind of says that the bulk of the news, the bulk of the emotion, the, the bulk of all of the traders' expectations, fears, greed, everything has kind of resolved itself. So this is kind of a good thing. This is probably our first day where we're actually looking um, at what, what comes next rather than just feeding off the emotions of every little piece of news that comes out and everything. So you, you absolutely can see the decrease in emotion in this chart and we're starting to uh, consolidate and flatten out. The longer the consolidation, the better. <clears throat> if we have a consolidation after a drop, uh, usually once averages come down and um, heads get a little bit cooler, the next move is to the upside. And I was just trying to explain this, that we have not seen a swing high. We have a swing low. In fact, our swing low candle is this one. It's kind of a funny, funny thing to, to uh, to point out this candle as being our swing low, but there are at least two candles on either side that have higher lows and and higher highs. And so these two candles here um, make this the swing low. <clears throat> so swing low is in the books. The swing high is not in the books though. We don't have any candle that has a high that's higher than two candles on the left or the right, or a low that's higher than the two on the left and right. Um, the low is is in the books, but here the high does not does not count because this this high was higher. So we're still looking for a swing high, which means that the next logical move in the progression of this formation is a swing to the upside of some kind. So I'm kind of waiting for that and expecting that. But since things are so quiet, um, I figured that today would be a very fun day to get a little bit more. Um, nerdy about my AI that I've been building. And so I kind of want to just show you what I've come up with. And this is, this is what, <laughs> this is what it looks like. Let me just do a quick update really quick because um, our, our price of end of day is moving. You can see how I'm matching the open high, low and close here. So the open high, and low haven't changed, but our close obviously. So we're trading it around 16,700. So I'll just pop that in. And the real close will happen in, in a while, but let me just update this. Yeah, it looks like our close happens in two hours, two hours and 15 minutes. But um, this is quite interesting. Uh, our most, so, this calc column is really our variance column. And uh, out of nine data points, we have 29% variance, <laughs> if you sum the variance of, of them all. So, so none of this data really can be taken very seriously. But you can kind of see that we're starting to at least resemble. Um, from a percent standpoint, did we, did we drop a certain percent? Have we had a little bit of price action? What's the most recent um, you know, view of, of all of this? And uh, what happens is we get these, these 10 data points that are most like 
the, the last 55 days. So that's what this AI is doing. And in uh, December 3rd of, of 2019, this was the day that matched the variance uh, of the past 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21 um, days back to 55. So I've used the Fibonacci sequence to kind of match up the, the historical um, events with our current event. And nothing's matching very perfectly. It'd be really nice to see this below like 12. Uh, it would be way more believable if I could get that in there. But we're not. So there's so it just kind of means that we we have some time to to look and think about it. Well, um, the 10 most close uh, events that that's that are simulating in the past an event that we that we've just experienced uh, are listed here. So this is the second one. This one looks a little bit better because you see a nice nice drop, a decent bounce, and now we're kind of leveling off, and that's exactly what we're doing now. But where we've come from a high and and we're we're trading lower before it's a little it's not it's not perfect and you can see that difference and here's another case where we had kind of a, a decent drop it's probably looking at this drop and then looking at price up here and so we're missing this whole move <laughs> so there's there's a lot of uh, variance here but you can kind of get the idea that this is sort of where we are and, and it looks like if after a drop we're starting to level off, at least out of these experiences, um, most of the bleeding is done. This was the worst case scenario. This one was was um, in 2014 where we, we had just kind of started. But like I say, I think that now that we're at the end of our um, bear market, I don't really see a huge drop off. But these these charts are kind of showing what we're, what we look like. Well, what I spent time doing today is I spent time um, figuring out what our average move looks like. So this call, this um, row up here um, shows that we are um, tomorrow, based on the average of, of all of these data points, the average for Bitcoin is that we would just barely lose a little bit. We'd be down 0.1% tomorrow. And then the next day, uh, we'd be up 0.38% from today. So in two days, we should be up a little bit. In three days, we'd be down a little bit. Five days, we'll be up almost, you know, about, a, about almost 1%. We drop off again, and then we start building momentum maybe in a month from now. This is actually not too far off from what I've been kind of saying to the Pro Channel, that I bet we need a month to kind of recover from this drop. And then, then we can start climbing and doing other things. But um, I've created this little button called average and the average, this is a very, <laughs> this is, this just shows you how nerdy I am sometimes. So our, our day is um, around, so I put 16,700 right in here. Uh, it's hard to find. Okay. So 16,700. There are three data points. So I'm looking at the, the final series four um, to, to show the close price. And if I go down to here, if I can see if I can get over over here. My data point is showing. Yeah, okay, so it's 16,659. So it's not perfect. Or maybe that's the day before now. Yeah, that's it. So, so this is the this is the data point that we're kind of trying to match with here, and what's interesting is that these numbers kind of tell us what's happening over the next 55 days, but it's just taking kind of shots as it goes. Um, but we don't have any information on the prior, and what I've done is I've taken the prior 55 days and I've averaged them based on the percent difference uh, from the from these days. So if I, if I took just a random day from here and I went back uh, 55 days and I took the percent gain or loss as of the close on this date, um, comparing that back, then I average the 10 variances and then it gives me uh, the price. If I multiply the price by our current price, it tells me the price where 
I expect um, where I would have expected the price to be. <laughs> so this is the, the historical event. If I average these 10 data points, um, the average historical view of a chart of the chart looked like this. <laughs> so it shows you that the average of event is different than our current by a fair amount. I, I mean, it's pretty obvious to see how it's different. But this was the best that I could do based on the historical data that was available. So as these numbers get more precise, um, the historical average performance will match uh, closer. So based on this historical viewpoint, uh, what would we do looking into the future? So I'm, I'm averaging every day instead of just picking data points. I'm average, averaging the the average high three days from now, averaging the low from three days from now, and the open and close. That's why these bars don't necessarily make sense because I'm also um, averaging the opens and closes. But it really tells a story. Um, it is. It would be very average for us to drop this much and consolidate for a solid eight days like we've done. And um, it would give us more time, and then we would start building a little bit of a baseline. We're not completely out of the woods, but near, nearing the end of our uh, data set, we're starting to climb. And this is exactly what I would expect to have, have happen. Um, we just need a little bit of time, and then we'll start moving uh, up. But it's just very, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty interesting to see um, visually what the average of these data points look like. Um, so we can kind of pick and choose the best ones. So like this one is the closest, and this one's the next closest, and we can kind of see what these are doing. But if we wanted to just get a full average snapshot, it would just be um, this view here, which looks pretty typical. I, I wouldn't expect to see too much different. Um, after a drop like this, we should see some sideways consolidation, and the average experience should be that we chill out for a while. But that um, a month from now uh, would not be, you know, unusual to see us to start gaining a little bit more traction and start moving up. <clears throat> so anyway, that was my uh, fun thing today. And as these numbers get better, uh, the information will get better. But um, it's pretty, you know, in, in this bear market, uh, my, my last video, I, I was talking about how long it takes to get to the bottom of the bear market. And we've put in the work. So we are now down at the bottom here looking for long entry points because um, if the four-year cycle is still intact, <clears throat> which there's a lot of arguments that there is, uh, this is the time to be looking for buying opportunities. When we get into a green zone, um, this is when we're looking for profits, taking profits or finding short opportunities. <clears throat> and so these, these green zones are the times when the rest of the world is buying and we are getting nervous and looking for the exit exit point when things are red <clears throat> this is when we're looking for buying opportunities and um, if we can time our buys so that we're patient and wait through the rest wait through the the majority of the drop and then finally look for uh, moves out of the red zone and um, towards higher you know more stability uh, the higher probability uh, longs are up are down here. Higher probability shorts are up here. And so it just takes a lot of patience, but it's really not rocket science. It's just it's just taking a step away from the emotions and just really looking at um, where we are. So uh, when we when we plummeted down here, you can see our RSI uh, maxed out, and now we're kind of floating in this range here. If we begin to see the RSI move above 50 or 55 consistently, at least at least consistently above 50, you can you can that will that's an indicator that we are definitely going to be starting to uh, build up some momentum. So this is something that I like to to keep on my chart just to um, see where that change is going to happen. Um, when we first had this drop here. It took us quite a while before we even got to the 50% mark. Um, yeah, in fact, it took us till, yeah, July. So 
it was it was this candle here that really showed that we finally are uh, we were starting to move out. But what did we need before we could get there? We needed to define the range at which we were trading. So we're we're we just had a fresh drop, and now we need we need a, probably a month to define where our boundaries are, where the emotional uh, landmarks are in our in our new chart. And with those data points in place, then we can actually start making decisions, and we'll probably see that in, in other indicators. Um, so we're we're just waiting and, and being patient. But this candle here is very positive. We've been waiting for, for something like this to show that the emotion has been drained out of the market. And now we can kind of uh, navigate as we do, build momentum if we if there is momentum. Uh, find our, our parameters of, of highs and lows. And now that we've established a swing low, uh, we just need a, to establish a swing high, and we've got our trading range back, and then this whole next move is gonna start taking shape. So, should be fun. I'm excited to, to do all of this with you guys and, and step through it so that nobody's surprised or, or uh, you know, I'll try to give you as much advantage as I possibly can. Thanks for making it to the end of my video. Uh, make sure you keep those trades small. Uh, don't force a trade. Don't get impatient. And uh, if you want to see how all this works, please come over and check me out on the subscription channel at CryptoInfluencers.com. Again, the link is in the description.